I make so many videos here and I'm showing techniques about how to do stuff with native script, but I seem to be ignoring a big part of the population, the angular population and the view population. And I'm sorry about that. Now, let me just explain. You see, a lot of the things that I show here in native script core are actually pretty much the same in Angular and Vue. Uh, um, excuse me. I'm recording. Who is it? Uh, what are you doing here? I'm here to do the Angular bit. Oh, you want to do the Angular bit? Okay. Yeah, I got this. Fine. I, no <laughs> hey, problem. I can sit one out. I'm sure they've had enough of me. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll, I won't disappoint you, I okay. promise. You wanna do it? You think you can do this? I mean, this is not very easy. You think you can just hop in here and do this? Okay, come on. Fine, come on, here's your chair. Okay, be my All guest. Right, here we go. Wow, this is nice. Hi everybody. Today we're gonna to take one of the tutorials that my buddy over here recently did and he did it in NativeScript Core, and you all like this tutorial. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do this and how to convert what he did into Angular. I've got the iOS version here, and I've got the Android version running side by side. And basically we're gonna be creating this toggle bar. And the benefit of having a toggle bar like this, which is like a segmented control, is that you can style it however you like and it'll look the same on iOS and Android. Well, almost the same, but pretty close. So here is my project called Demo Toggle Bar and this is Native Script Core. As you can see, I've styled the editor, I've styled Visual Studio Code here using Peacock extension and I made it blue. We're gonna do the same thing for Angular and that's gonna be red. I'm gonna create a new project TNS create demo toggle bar ng dash dash ng. As you know, this will create a brand new NativeScript Angular project. Once that project is scaffolded out, I'm gonna go into that directory, cd demo toggle bar ng, and I'm gonna open this up in VS Code. And right away, I'm gonna hit F1 here and I have Peacock installed. So the first thing I'm gonna do is change it to Angular Red so I don't get those things confused. If you're running a bunch of different projects and you're using the same editor, I recommend changing the colors up a little bit so you can tell the difference easily. Here's our Angular project. I'm gonna open up source and then app, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So back on the command line, I'm gonna say TNS run Android. So this is gonna run on Android. And I'm gonna have a copy of the old one running on iOS just for comparison. All right, while that's starting up, let's go visit our code the original toggle bar. Now notice something here. This is the XML for that page. And I have page here. Now, in native script Angular, we don't have a concept of page. Pages are abstracted away. You don't need to worry about it. We use components. So what I'm gonna do is just copy this right here, which is the grid layout and all of the contents inside the page without the page, okay? So we're just gonna copy that. Let's go back to the Angular project and let's open up app component. The way this scaffolded it out is it's using page router outlet. We don't need all that. I just want to demonstrate one page for you here. So I'm going to remove all that and we're going to use app component. So app component, I'm going to paste this in here. Here's our grid layout. One thing you'll notice right off the bat is that the Angular parsing engine for the markup is not gonna work the same way that it does with NativeScript Core. We can't have self-closing tags, and this is just a limitation of the Angular parser. All right, so I'm gonna need to close all these self-closing tags, and I just need to put a closing tag on the end of it. I know it's a pain, but we gotta do it. Whew. And we're done. Okay, not really, we're not done yet. <laughs> we need the code, right? So let's go see if we have this running already. There is our emulator. And we have one, two, and three up there. It's behind the status bar, see that? So we need to somehow modify this. Oh, I know, let's bring some styles in, shall we? So let's go back and we have app.css here where I have a bunch of custom styles. So this toggle, toggler, and toggle label were custom styles. If you didn't see that tutorial, by the way, I explain everything and what we're doing with all this. 
and how we're getting to that stuff. So go check that out. It's going to be helpful if you need an explanation, a detailed explanation of what all these do. For now, we're just copying and pasting. Okay, so let's go back to the Angular project and in app.css, I'm just going to paste that in here. Toggle, toggler and toggle label. Now, of course, you can also make a app component CSS file and put that next to your app component as well. Up to you. I'm just going to put a global style here. And as soon as I do that, you'll see that now we have a styled toggle bar, but it's still behind that status bar. Why? Why is that happening? Well, for some reason, when you have a root grid layout, it doesn't vertically center your contents like it does in native script core. I'm not 100% sure why that is, but only for root grid layouts. So let me go ahead and add an attribute here that's going to center our content. Vertical alignment equals middle. Once I do that, you'll see that we have a little reformatting that happened and we have these things in the middle. Now, of course, when I tap on these, they don't work. We still need some code. So how are we doing this in NativeScript Core? Let's go back there for a second. All right, here's NativeScript Core and we have an event, the loaded event on our grid layout, which is the wrapper, the toggle itself. And there's no other events. We're just doing everything through this one event. Let's go take a look at that, shall we? So here's mainpage.ts, which is the code behind for that XML file in NativeScript Core. Here is that on toggle loaded function, which gets called when that element, that NativeScript element, which is the grid layout, gets loaded. Okay, this is important because we're going to come back to that in a second. When that element gets loaded, we fire this off and then we grab a hold of that toggler. And toggler is this part right here. And then we have LB. LB is the layout base. So that's the actual layout, the grid layout. We grab a hold of that and we iterate through all its children. When the child class is not toggler, that means we're looking at these three labels right here. We're going to attach a tap event to each one of those labels. And then after the tap happens, we animate. And that's how we get that effect. So here on iOS, you can see that that effect is happening. This is the old version. All right, so let's do that. I'm going to go ahead into my Angular project and I'm going to copy this whole function here. You know what? Let's include the imports because we're going to need those two. I'm going to copy the whole file. Copy that and let's go back to our Angular project and let's go to the app component.ts. So this is the component code now. And inside the class, I'm going to paste everything in there. Of course, we need to do a little cleanup. I'm going to take the imports here, cut and paste them at the top. And instead of exporting a function, we're inside a class now. So we need to just make that a public method of the class. And I'm going to save this. It's going to reformat. OK, is this going to work? No. <laughs> and why? Let's take a look. So in our app component template, we have the loaded event, but we need to convert this to Angular syntax. In order to do that, I'm going to say loaded in parens. That's the event binding syntax in Angular. And on toggle loaded, we're going to call that function and passing in the dollar event on toggle loaded. All right. So that's going to call here. By the way, notice that we are still able to call the loaded event and the events that just happen on elements, as well as regular Angular component lifecycle hooks. We'll take a look at that in a second. Here is the loaded event happening. Now, is this working? Well, no, it's not working. OK, why is it not working? Let's take a look here. So when on toggle loaded happens, we get a hold of the LB. LB is the layout base, which is the grid layout itself. And then we say LB dot page. Hmm. Well, that worked in native script core, but that's not going to work in native script angular. And that's because there is no page. We don't have a page. We just have the grid layout as the root component. So there's a couple things we can do here. By the way, the reason we're calling lb.page.getViewById is to get a hold of toggler, which is this view right here, this label that's a child of that grid layout. There's other ways of getting to the children of the layout. We can't use the page here because that's going to be undefined. In this case, there is no page. But the root view happens to be the grid layout. Two ways of doing this. One is we can go to LB. It doesn't have a parent, which is the view base, but it has a parent node. 
It's a little confusing, I know. We can get to the parent node, and from there we can call get view by ID, and this will work. Parent is null because there is no parent view, but parent node works because parent node is the Angular concept, and that'll work. However, this is not very intuitive for people that are coming into an Angular and they're trying to convert a NativeScript core into Angular, right? You don't have to do this. Okay, this will work, but you don't have to do this. Another way of doing this is, take a look here. We have the grid layout. What we're trying to get to is the children of that grid layout. Well, you don't need to go up to the parent of the grid layout in order to get a hold of its children by ID. We can just say LB get view by ID and then say toggler in here. So we're just gonna call that, cast it as view and say const toggler equals that. And we can comment this one out. All our other code is still the same. We're still attaching the tap event and let's see if this works. Yes, okay, so that works fine. We can stop there, but it's not very Angular-ish, if that's a word. The loaded event of each view of each NativeScript element has its uses in NativeScript Angular. However, in this case, you actually don't need it. How do we avoid using that loaded event? Well, we can use the component lifecycle instead. In Angular, a component has a lifecycle, and it has things like ng on init, ng after view init. Let's implement on init, which gets imported from Angular core up here. Okay, and I can just in Visual Studio Code, go to app component, click on this little blue thing and say implement interface on init. It's gonna add this method. I like to make things public just to be explicit about it. You don't have to do that. I'm gonna not throw that. And instead, what I'm going to do is copy all this logic out of on toggle loaded. I'm going to cut it out and paste it in ng on init. Now, since we're initializing this and we don't have args, I'm going to comment that out. But how do we get a hold of that grid layout? Well, we do it the standard Angular way. While I'm here, I'm going to just delete this loaded event. And instead, I'm going to give this hash layout. So this is the uh, the view identifier that we can grab a hold of in our component code. So this is gonna give us a view child reference. So I can go in here in the class and say view child layout, and that's gonna be of type element ref. So all those things need to be imported. Let's see, is view child imported? No, we need to import that as well. View child takes a couple of parameters. The first one is that identifier itself. So that's layout. Probably should have called it toggle, but that's fine. Layout works. And then we'll need a second parameter. Let's just give it uh, static true. You won't have to do that with Angular 9, but for now we do. There's our layout, which we can get a hold of here in ng on init. So how do we do that? Well, I can say const lb equals this dot layout dot native element. And I want to cast that as layout base. Everything else can stay the same. I'm gonna save this and let's check it out. The moment of truth, I'm gonna hit two and we have the animation. So this is working just fine. You can also use the ng after view init hook if you really wanted to. But by this time in the life cycle, we're able to access the child views of that grid layout. So we can still do it in ng on init if we needed to. So as you can see, most of the things can just convert from NativeScript Core to NativeScript Angular without too much work. If you wanted to go a little further and make things more Angular, the way Angular would do things and the style of Angular, then you can do a few other things. But for the most part, that'll do the job. So what do you think? Did I do a good job explaining this? Should I come back and do Angular stuff later? Did I do a good job? Okay, well, thanks for having me and uh, it's been a pleasure. And uh, what do you say? Oh, um, happy native scripting and I'll see you in the next video. Is that right? Okay, see you later folks. I'll just, I'll just let myself out. Okay, okay. Bye. Yeah.